So filled up tonight. Fireworks going to be going off all over the place. But the Lord is looking for us saying, what about my people? What kind of noise are they making tonight? I've been good to them. Hallelujah. Wake that voice up. <laughs> Amen. And if you was wise like me, you went home early and took a nap. You wasn't wise? You're going to be feeling about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. You're going to be feeling it. But that's all right. Some of us remember that. We didn't get started till about 12 o'clock at night. Hello, somebody. Okay, all right. I'm not going to take you back too far. Amen. Exodus chapter 15. You got it, sir? Exodus 15. I didn't hear you. Waiting on the projector. Okay. All right. I wanted all of us to read together, ma'am. I mean, we can if you got, if it's going to be a minute. You got, is it on? I can't see with all the lights up here. It is. Now it is. <laughs> Exodus 15, beginning reading at verse 1 all the way through verse 18. We're going to read that together. Everybody, you ready? <clears throat> Get up here so we can read together. Come on, let's read. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. This is the NIV version, okay? I'm all right, okay? The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior, for the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger it consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoil. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working miracles, wonders? You stretched out your right hand, and the earth swallowed your enemies. Thank you, Jesus. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chief of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Cana will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as a stone. Until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you bought by, wow. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. Come on, praise the Lord. He reigns. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I just need you to relax a little bit. You at home. 
Come on in. Praise the Lord. Come on in. We're going we gonna to sing a couple of songs. Y'all know how we do this. Come on, warm it up a little bit. Get your voices warm up. Come on. Come on, Pastor Sherelle. We ready. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Blessed. Are you ready to... I was going to say party. <laughs> Are you ready to praise party this new year out? This old year out and the new year in. <laughs> praise the Lord. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning, this evening. <laughs> everybody, if you would stand, please. And just right before we get ready to start, I want you to just run in about for one minute. Go hug somebody. Tell them you love them. Tell them how wonderful they look, how beautiful they are, how handsome they are in the Lord. Yes. Come on in. Just come on in. Good to see you. Love you, Carmelita. <laughs> Love you, Irisima. <laughs> Danette. <laughs> I love you, nephew Knight. As for you and your piano, you're going to praise the Lord. <laughs> Love all y'all. <laughs> Love you, Brother Stacy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many of you know that the Lord is good all the time? He's been good all year long. There's not one single thing that he has not done for us. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So we ought to be excited about being in the house of the Lord tonight to give him all the glory and the honor that's due unto his name. Amen. So we're going to start out with, Lord, you're good. Hallelujah. <laughs> these, two, these two praise and worship courses tonight have been by special request. Okay? So we like to honor request.
you are, yes you are, yes you are. So good, you are good. All the time, all the time. All the time. You are good, you are good. You are good, you are good. All the time, all the time. All the time, you are good. You are good, you are good. All the time, all the time. All the time.
kingdom. We're kingdom people. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're mighty. Say that with a loud voice. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, I'm going to give us a few minutes before Pastor Stacy comes. Praise the Lord. I'm going to give you a few testimonies. Hot, hot, his victories, what he's done for you. Ooh, ooh. why the fireworks going off down there? Let's send up some fireworks up there. Let's talk about his goodness and what he's done for us this year. Anybody, who wants to start off? the Lord, saints. Good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Amen. Amen. Woo. All right. God's been good, saints. He is mighty. He is worthy to be praised. Not some of the time. 
Not most of the time. That's right. All the time. My testimony tonight is about my son. Some of you all got to meet him, see him. Some of y'all for the first time. Some pastor know my son when he was just a little bitty something. Grew up in this church. My son's been through some stuff. He's in the hospital. Didn't think he was going to make it, but God. He got out of the hospital, but God. Then he told me and his mother that he was going to move. He lived in Pensacola, and he told us that he was going to move to New Orleans. Not a good place. We tried to convince him otherwise, but of course, when they're grown, they're going to do what they want to do, right? So he moved to New Orleans. And um, we didn't know when we was going to see him again. And then just before Thanksgiving, <laughs> he showed up. Me and his mother was ecstatic. He came to church, y'all. But after Thanksgiving, he went back home. To New Orleans, he said, he's got to go. Then Sunday morning, his brother TJ's ministering the word. My phone is vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. My phone don't do that unless there's something going on. It's my son's roommate. He leaves a message, call it back as soon as possible. Go outside, call. It's, you, it's, it's one of those things, you, you know you just don't like for people to start off a conversation a certain way. You know, because it makes you think the worst. And his roommate started out saying, well, I need to tell you, we hadn't seen Anthony in three days. Three days, my son's missing. We filed a police report, and in New Orleans, they said, you know, we'll, we'll look, but, you know, they got so much going on in New Orleans. And so just as I was about to get off the phone, I told him, my son is going to be all right because he's in the hands of the Lord. And as I hung up the phone, Pastor Stacy walks outside, and he prays with me and agrees with me that my son is going to come home. Well, that evening... I got a phone call that my son had made it back home. But it didn't end there because he's been gone for three days. And we still don't understand where he's been for three days. <laughs> but on yesterday, as I was at work, I got a phone call. My son called to tell me, Dad, I want to come home. Saints, my son is coming home. Oh, come on, bless the Lord. That's what he's doing. Bring the prodigals home. Bring the way with children home. I'm not going to get messed up in this world. I know where my roots are. I know where my blessings are. 
bring them home, Lord. I don't care how they come back. Let them come back. And we receive them with open arms. Prayer works. Prayer works. We're happy for you, sir. Anthony has a, he has a mission in life. And the enemy don't like the golden family. Your family, my family, anybody in ministry particularly. The devil hates that, so he'll try to kill our children. He can't touch us because we crazy. We done made our mind up. We on our way to heaven. So I'm going to touch those that, I, that you love. That's what he does. But the Lord is great. And that's why I sing, he's mighty. And I'm happy for you, sir. And we with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who's next? Come on. Come on. We don't have a lot of time. Good testimony. Come on. Come on. This is, you're supposed to be jumping and moving. But God, I like that, but God, it's been a year for me. First of it, I had a quintuple bypass. Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Then they put a pacemaker in me. Now, when you get a pacemaker, you get problems, but God. And they said, you got, I just finished preaching doing the thing up on it. I come down, I thought I lost my balance. But what happened was, I went in what they call afibulation. Now when you get afibulation, that makes I'm a primary candidate for a blood clot. I could drop dead like that. You know what, it's gonna be a good year for me. Amen. I don't believe that, because I don't think God no. brought me this far to have me drop dead. Amen. But Amen. if he does, but God, I'll be in a bad place. So now you got the problem. You go to the doctor and he says, take this. And I read the instruction. That stuff kill you. Right. <laughs> but then you have to weigh the good and the bad. Now the bad part, the prescription is $475 a month. But I got insurance. But God, $216 a month with my insurance. But God, I went to the VA and they're going to give it to me for eleven dollars a month. <laughs> but yeah. But so we got a lot of stuff. Now, yeah, the good thing, and I'm going to turn it over to my baby. If you would have asked me what the worst thing that happened to me, I would tell you my hearing loss, but not because I lost the hearing. Because I have a love for young people, and the hearing loss. Young folks, I can't hear you when you talk because you talk at a different frequency. Kills me. Because I want to hear what you got to say. And when we have those Sunday church services, when you take over, oh my God. Seeds of greatness in action. I see things, I hear things, oh my God. But when I go to talk to you one on one, it kills me. But the VA, they qualified for what they call a cochlear ear implant. And that might correct it. But now I have to go through speech therapy. But I've been through a lot of therapy, so I know about therapy. I'm ready to take them guys on. Amen. But I have to learn to hear again. I have to learn to talk again. I have to do all that. I'm in my 80s. That's a challenge, but I'm looking forward to it. But God, so you know what? I can get up and say, you know what my God did for me? Amen. They're going to put them things. So this month, I'm meeting with the cochlear ear implant people in Pensacola. Then we're going to go in for an audit auditory. We're going to learn to, to talk and speech therapists. Then we're going to go to the doctor that's going to do the cutting. And But, you know, every time they got to cut me, they got to take an MRI. I got to call the guy. They got to get my pacemaker and turn me on, turn me off. <laughs> Man, I got more stuff. I got more wires and... I walk around, man, I got an amplifier for this, an amplifier for that. I got a little thing by my bedside. The guy gave me a talkie thing. So if Sharon wakes me up in the middle of the night and wants to say something, I got to plug myself in and say, huh, what, what, what? But <laughs> she's, she's been real good about that. Okay, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love the way he explains it? <laughs> I do. <laughs> He's just crazy, and I love it. I love it. He keeps me laughing all the time. That keeps both of us young. So I, I truly, I, he's my superhero. 
He, he's my superman, my hero. Amen, amen. Uh, he kind of skimmed over the top of a lot of things that happened. Um, when I rushed him to the ER when he fell up here on stage, his blood pressure was down in the 50s. And that says death. Am I right? Yeah. And he said, I knew that I was dying a couple of times. But he said, I looked at your face and I knew I had to fight. That's love. That's love. We'll be celebrating 42 years of marriage in February. And I'm just, I'm so grateful that God has kept him. God and I have had a lot of talks, a lot of talks. And he's heard me. He's heard me. But he already had that plan for him anyway. So we're coming along. And the cochlear implants, uh, if they have to stick them in the, the skull area to a certain place, then he has to have all this speech therapy. But if they put it into the bone area, that means that he wouldn't have to go through all of that. So please be in agreement with us that it can be done there and he won't have to go through that, that he'll walk out of there and be able to hear and speak with no problem. Thank you all. So we love you. Thank you. Special love you. Love you. Thank you. Oh, come on, praise the Lord. I'm in my 80s, but I'm not quitting now. No, I'm not done yet. Hallelujah. What time you got? What time you got? Huh? We've got 15 more minutes for Pastor Stady. It's Pastor Stady. Y'all ready? You revving up over there, sir? Rev it up for me. Rev it up. Come on, who's next? Come on, let's go. What, what's, what are y'all doing? This testimony of service. Come on. Mine is just real quick, and um, for 2019, for me, um, I would say my theme for 2019 was don't become so complacent being a survivor that you forget you're an overcomer. And in that, and me being reminded of that and God placing that on my heart, 2019 did come with a lot of completion and a lot of things for me, so... For 2020, for me and anyone else who needs to hear it, again, don't become so complacent being a survivor. You forget God made you an overcomer. Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? Y'all quiet. How y'all doing? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So this year, 2019, the Lord taught me patience. So... In October, I bought my dream car, but a lot of people don't know that my car is seven years old. That's how long it took me. We all know that seven is the number of perfection and seven is the number of completion. And the Lord just let me know, all you gotta do is wait. Don't move without me. If you move without me, you're not gonna have the protection that I know that I can provide for you. Don't move, don't step out there. What you doing, girl? Get back, girl, back to going up. What are you doing? And it's in the color that I wanted it to be. And I got it at an amazing price because brand new, that car is about $60,000, okay? And I'm just being honest with you. But I just want y'all to know that be patient. Let the Lord work on your behalf. That's what I learned. So there's a lot of goals that I have set for myself, but until the Lord tells me to move, I ain't going nowhere, amen? amen. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Come on. Come on, tongue man. We're still working on the message. Come on, sir. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, sir. Woo. 2019. 2019 was a, it was a good year. It was. It was a good year. Uh, one of the biggest blessings I, we as a family um, had to happen, my parents were living in an old raggedy house. It's a big house but uh, it was falling apart. And me and my brothers and brother-in-laws and friends, we thought we could go in there and fix it. My wife said we couldn't, <laughs> and she was right. It was in much worse condition than we thought. 
And um, it ended up the first day that they ch that the contractor came out to start to repair the house, and I'll just I'll just go over it. The first day out, they started tearing the roof off. They realized that 30, maybe even 40 or 50 years ago, the house had caught on fire, and they put wood over it and sold it to my mom and dad. Because <laughs> back then, the codes didn't, you didn't have to disclose that. Um, then they found termites. So we end up tearing the house completely down and building my parents a three-bedroom house, three-bedroom, two-bath, brand new from the slab book. That was uh, a tremendous blessing. So I look at 2019 as being great. I had some stuff happen to me. I still say it was great. I had to have a lens replaced in my eye. <laughs> Complete robotic surgery. They took the lens out and put me a new lens in. I see great. I sat right over there in that corner. And my wife, one of the few times she didn't come to church with me, because she was working, and I developed two blood clots in my leg. Nobody knew. I didn't tell anybody. My wife knew. Went to the hospital after the service. And, uh, well, I went home, told my wife that during the service my leg started hurting. She took me to the hospital, and they said I had blood clots. Never had anything like that before. Um, it scared me, but I was okay. The next day, the very next day, I had to go to the dentist first thing in the morning. They started me on blood thinner. I went to the dentist for my cleaning. I'm sitting in the chair, they're looking at my teeth, and I've always had good teeth. And they, they said, oh, man, you, you, you're doing good. Everything's great. You know, the teeth look good. You having any trouble? I said, well, no, no, not really having any trouble. Every now and then, this one right here just kind of feels a little funny. They x-rayed, pictures, all this stuff, everything great. Went home that night, <laughs> sitting there eating, kind of licking my wounds about this blood clot thing. I chew on a piece of meat, not a piece of gristle, not a piece of bone. Split the tooth in half. <laughs> I hate. Called the dentist the next morning. It didn't hurt, but I knew something had happened. I told my wife, I said, man, something, something going on. It didn't hurt. Next morning, I called him, called my dentist. They say, come back in. They x rayed, and they say, well, TJ, we don't see nothing. I said, man, there's something going on. <laughs> So they take and take pictures, and the tooth was split this way. They said they don't understand how it happened. Take me and start drilling, get about halfway through. Now, remember, they started me on those blood thinners. <laughs> so they get about halfway through with the crown preparation, and she says, TJ, this is not going to work. I got to send you somewhere else. So they sent me across town to this guy, and he says, oh, yeah, we can fix that, but we got to get you off the blood thinners for so many hours. Now, so now I got like a quarter of a tooth in my mouth, the blood clot. He want me to stop taking the blood thinners until they can do the surgery the next day. So I go in there the next day, and they finish taking the tooth out. Of course, I, um, I bleed a little bit. At least I thought it was a little bit. And uh, they sent me home. I get home, and I bleed, and I bleed, <laughs> and I bleed. The next morning, I called him up. I said, man, it didn't stop bleeding. And he says, well, that's probably a lot of saliva. It's probably more saliva than blood. And I'm like, no, that's blood. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's blood. <laughs> so my wife takes me back to the, to the dentist. Now he's not in Fort Walton. Today he's in Crestview. So I have to come to Crestview. He's 
recommends, he tells me he's going to give me this medicine, but I have to go on base to get it. And he calls in a favor to get it on base, but he don't work on base anymore. So that just messed everything up. So it, that took a while. And make a long story short, between, oh, did I tell y'all I started wearing hearing aids too this year? <laughs> I started wearing hearing aids too. <laughs> It's been a great year still, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so between, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> between the eye surgery, the hearing aids, the tooth, the blood clots, the house getting built, my wife, um, I got a great looking garden this year. But with all of that, I, I can honestly say that it was great that I had two insurance policies. That military retiree, that's good insurance policy. That is a good insurance policy. But this was my great insurance policy. Thank you. Come on, come on, hurry, hurry. The time is going fast. We don't have much time left. Come on. Real quick, less complaining and more gratitude. The Lord not only blessed me with, one, at one time I didn't have a job. Now I have four jobs. Like I go around, I make my own schedule and I draw blood. That's all I do and I love it. <laughs> and who wants their they blood drawn? No. This girl right here, I just wanna say, that's my friend, that's my sister in Christ. She took us in, me and my children, when we didn't have a place to stay. We stayed with her for a while. She kept us. She prayed over us. We pray together every morning. We call each other around 7, and we pray together. And I'm just thankful for her, and I'm thankful for my children. And that's all I just wanted to say. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen. It's been a great year. Thank you, Steve. Hey, y'all. So um, I want to say 2019 was the year of guidance for me. Um, this time... Last year, in 2018, I had actually quit my job for no reason other than I didn't want to work there anymore. And I didn't have another job lined up. I didn't know what I was doing. I was actually traveling to uh, Orlando to go hang out with some friends for New Year's and everything. So I was like, I had no job, didn't know what I was doing. I was like, okay, I was just tired of that. I needed something new. So when I got back, um, I I applied at so many different places. And you know, it, you, it seems on paper like it's really easy to get a job. And when you actually have to do it, that's a whole nother thing. And I told my aunt and I told my uncle, I was like, okay, I need some help here. And my aunt was like, hey, go apply here. And I was like, I don't wanna work there. I think I can find somewhere else. So I went two or three more weeks and I was like, okay, um, getting down to the last bit of my money. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll just go, uh, maybe listen to you auntie and go apply at i -Core. And the very next day, they called me and said, hey, apply for a job. Uh, you want it? Come down. I said, oh, okay, thank you, Jesus. All right, I got a job now. I'm good. Didn't miss a payment on my car. Didn't miss a payment on my phone. Nothing like that. So I was like, okay, God carried me through my own mistake. I was like, I, and through guidance, I made it through it. So I was like, okay, thank you, Jesus. And then that was back in February of when I got hired. And so the day... So you have to go through a waiting period, which like is four weeks before you get paid at i -Core. And the day that I was down to my last $4 was also the same day that my payment for my car, which was $99, was going to come out. It was also the same day that i -Core decided they wanted to pay me for the four weeks of time that I had been working for them. So I was like, that was nothing but God, because if, if that check <laughs> hadn't to drop first... <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it, and I was like, I went up to the bank, and they're like, I was like, okay, 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 I might need to, I think it might have overdrafted, can we take it? It's like, no, there was no overdraft, uh, actually, your payment went for it. I was like, oh, thank God, <laughs> okay, I'm good. Then, I've always had problems with my teeth, and I've always just let it go through, because I knew I didn't have insurance, and that was not something I wanted to pay for, and so I always just let it go. You know, I brush my teeth, floss and everything. So you do the basic hygiene, try to keep up with it. And come about three or four months ago, it just got to the point where it was unbearable. I'm, I don't have a high tolerance for pain. 
So, like, it started to hurt, and I was like, okay, I can deal with it. And then it got worse, and I was like, you know what? Okay, I need to, I need to do something about this. So I had forgot that I had signed up for dental insurance. So I told my boss, I was like, hey, I'm going to have to go home. I cannot, like, I'm losing my sanity. It hurts so much. I can't focus. Every, it's, everything's in pain. She's like, well, why don't you just use your dental insurance? And I was like, do I have that? <laughs> and so she gave me a card. I called, and they were like, yeah, you have insurance. You've been paying for February. And I was like, okay. So I went and got it done, and they told me it was going to be $6,000 to get everything, because I had to get all four of my wisdom teeth out, and then because of my wisdom teeth and how long I let it go, I also had a, um, a cavity that just couldn't be repaired, so they had to take that tooth too. So I was like, $6,000, I don't have that. And so he was like, well, depending on what your dental insurance is, if you have a good enough, they might be able to knock something down and things like that. Um, so I was like, oh, I really hope I have good insurance. So I gave him the card, and then I was sweating it out, and I was praying, and I told my aunt and uncle, I was like, that's $6,000, I don't got it. But, but God, because they called me, and they was like, hey, they'll take care of everything. Your copay is $300. And I was like, 300 from 6000 I was like, yeah, okay, I can do that. And it was like, oh, do you, they said, you want to do a payment plan too? I was like, a payment plan on $300? <laughs> sure, let's go. <laughs> so... I went in, I was like, oh, follow the guidance of my aunt. I was like, okay, that's, that's step two. Everything's good. Aunt and uncle picked me up, took me home, took care of me, everything. Auntie got me everything I ever needed. Uncle got me soup. I was like, I'm in heaven. This is great. I'm being cared for hand and foot. Do you want this? I can make you that. I was like, oh, God, thank you. <laughs> and so, but the bills don't stop just because, you know, you've had surgery. So I tried to go to work outside of what the doctors told me to do. They said, wait a week. I said, hey, I can talk and eat after four days. The next day, I'm going to try to go to work. I tried to go to work the fifth day, and that's when so many circumstances happened all at the same time, because it's just crazy. Someone's sitting in the street. I try to go around them, sneeze, pull on my stitches, flinch, can't correct, straight into a tree. So now I'm like, OK hysterically crying, my vehicle is totaled. This is the only vehicle I have. I don't know what I'm going to do. But God, because everything that my aunt and uncle told me to do from the time I started living with them paid off in that one moment. I had good enough credit to get a bigger loan for the same price. And my aunt helped me look everywhere. And my uncle put the wisdom in me. You do not need to spend more than you don't live outside your means is what he told me. And that paid off because on the very last day of when I needed the car to be, uh, the rental car to be returned, we found something in the same place we had originally started and they told me they didn't have anything. And now I've got everything I've, everything that has happened to me, God had provided more than what I needed in the moment. And that was what it reminded me. When you're going into 2020, bad things are gonna happen for everyone in this room and everyone we're connected to but we have that word. We have that Bible that tells us the things that we are going to go through are going to come. He didn't say he's going to stop us, but he will provide ways out and a means of escape that you will never be able to understand. You can only tell them, but God. Okay, we're getting down to the wire. Quickly, I need you to move faster than that. I need you to move faster than that. You all know that I started a new uh, position this year. Um, complete total change for the household. Um, but the, the reason why they hired me was because they didn't actually have uh, design at the company. So I came in implementing something that had not existed there before. Uh, the reason why that I found out after two or three months was there was a contract that they were trying to win. Uh, this contract was the biggest that the company had ever taken on. It's a very young company. It's only five years old. So we found out uh, a couple weeks ago that we won that contract. Yeah. It's enough for, they, they're saying that it's enough work, follow-on work for about 20 years to 
a company that's about 83 people. Um, and that was only one contract. We, we won two to support that one contract plus three others and still moving forward. So uh, for me, someone who is not considered educated, don't have a, a, a degree, the Lord has always saw fit to show that if you show yourself approved, if you study and you pray and depend on him, he'll give you something that nobody else. It's like that, that company, the way that they are built is just like what something would be in Silicon Valley. So it's like I'm working at an Apple or one of the other companies, the way that it's developed. It's just like a startup, just like that. And I got my name in Fortune magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a it's a little 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 small print cuz I took the picture. I took the picture. But the Lord was proving to me. He was like even though you're not in it, your name is still in the book. And that's what salvation is like. It's not about us at all. It's about him. And as long as your name is in the book, as long as it's in the book, He's got you squared away and taken care of. So I give God all the praise and glory. My name is in the book. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can't preach after that, you just can't preach. You feel what I'm saying? If you, oh man, I, I want to thank the Lord, first of all, that I'm alive. 2019 was, and it's still 2019, it was a long year. Um, many of you know that I was sick in January, almost died in January. Blood clots, my leg and blood clot in my lungs and a uh, very trying year. Um, I got off blood thinners at about June or July and <clears throat> had some issues, inflammation, lost the feeling in my feet and in my hands, and found out I had a B12 issue and rheumatoid arthritis. And, and, uh, but, you know, God has, he's teaching me about mercy. <laughs> he's teaching me, you know, he, you know, I was wondering, you know, God, you know, I like to play basketball, but you can't play basketball if you can't feel your hands or your feet. I know some people, that's how you always played, but not me. <laughs> but, but the Lord is, he's helping me. And, he, and, you know, I'm so appreciative that I'm alive and I'm so appreciative that I'm on my way back to victory. I, I say, you know, the devil, you know, he, he would like to try to take me out with circumstances. But I know that God is stronger. My God is mighty and my God is good. And, and you know, I'm looking forward to 2020. Now, I don't have a, I don't have a whole lot of time. And uh, I even brought a stopwatch. Not that it's going to stop me, but I brought a stopwatch. You know? <laughs> the only thing that can stop me now is you, Pastor Compton. Amen. And so I want to thank you. Thank you both for the privilege. I want you to grab your Bibles. Let's open up to Matt, uh, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, and we're going to look in verses number 46 through 52 in the word of the Lord. I want to preach a message just for a couple of moments about Bartimaeus, the blind man who had 20-20 vision. Bartimaeus, the blind man who had 20-20 vision. And if I can just go a little bit further, we need some 20-20 vision for 2020. Have you ever been in a service where you could actually feel God's presence. It's kind of like being a new life. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Have you ever been in a place spiritually where you said, I, I don't want to be a spiritual beggar or a pomper anymore? Has anybody in this house ever been in a desperate situation where you knew that if Jesus did not stop, you were going to be in trouble? I got five people. I preached to five people tonight. I ain't even scared. A place where you said, you know something? Jesus, if you don't stop to help me, I'm done. 
as I was listening to people testify tonight and you were sharing, there's some people here that if the Lord had not stopped for you, you would have been in big trouble. A young brother testified. He stopped by and he helped you, didn't he, brother? And so there's a lot of people in the Bible that felt like this was their last chance to stop the master and they were not going to let anything hold them back. Can I tell the church here tonight that we can't let anything hold us back in 2020? Hear the story that we're going to look at here tonight briefly. Jesus came to Jericho, and the Bible says he left Jericho. In other words, he came through and he left. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is an illustration of what happens when we don't prepare ourselves for his presence. You missed a good spot to say preach that thing. You have to prepare yourself for the presence of God or he will come and go and you won't receive anything. It says he came to Jericho and he left Jericho. How many of you know that he came? He was not going to stay there. He was just passing through. I don't want him to pass me by tonight. I don't want him to pass me by in 2020. I don't want the Lord to show up and touch everybody else and me miss something. I love what God is doing in other people's life, but I need to have something for myself. I'm going to preach myself into victory here today. I'm trying to control myself because when I start sweating, my glasses fog up, but I might just get Holy Ghost Pentecostal here tonight. It says in Mark chapter uh, 10, verse number 46, now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat at the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still huh, and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I might receive my sight or regain my sight or that I may see again. Mm. Then Jesus said to him, I love when Jesus says something. I like, I like a word from you, but I'd rather hear from him. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. God, we thank you tonight for your presence. And we thank you even more that your presence is in our presence. And Lord, here tonight, I ask you, Lord, as we begin to wrap up 2019, do something special. God, our hearts are full of faith and expectancy. We give you praise for who you are, the unchanging God, the same today, yesterday, and forever. Who is like you? There is no one. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Yes. Go ahead and praise him. It's all right. Why did this man receive a touch? One of the reasons why he received a touch is because he was willing to say that he was empty. He was willing to say that he needed help. And secondly, he was willing to endure persecution. I was talking to my, my dad today, and I was telling my dad, you'll find all through the Bible that people who had the most difficult time getting to Christ are usually the ones who got the most profound touch. Those that had to go through obstacles and go through difficulty and go through the sneers and the laughter of people. There's people here. You had to go through a lot of drama to get to where you're at. Bartimaeus, he heard the crowd. He couldn't see, but he could hear. Talk to me, somebody. And he used what he had. He couldn't see, but he had some good vocal cords. I said he couldn't see, but he sure enough had some good vocal cords. I can only picture that sometimes you got to get almost animated and colorful with it. I can imagine this man. The crowd is there. He's got on his beggar's garments. They're saying, yo, bro, you honestly need to be quiet. 
Kind of like when you're getting excited about Jesus and you always got people looking at you sideways. You can feel them. You can feel them burning a hole in the side of your head. You want to look over and tell them, well, what you looking at? I can't praise God for you. <laughs> now, now when, when, when he heard that Jesus was coming to town, he began to cry out for mercy. Bartimaeus evidently had been contemplating this for a while. Hmm. He had been contemplating his condition. He had been contemplating his and cultivating a spiritual uh, desperation. You know what we need for this year coming up? There has to be a spiritual desperation, a place once again we'll go back and we'll just get desperate for the Lord. My question to you, New Life, is are we desperate here today? Are you desperate for the Lord to touch you? They charged him. They said, listen, you, you need to hold your peace. I know that's very eloquent. That, hold your peace. Hold your peace. No, actually, they said, shut up. <laughs> bra, 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 bra. Shut up. Jesus, you know, I'm thinking about this. I was thinking about this all day. Who did they think Jesus was coming for? Who's a candidate to get touched? Are the candidates to get touched the people who are quiet and dignified? Are the ones who are broken and desperate? Y'all ain't helping me preach here today. Don't make me work harder than I need to. Don't let anybody stop you from getting Jesus to stop for you. Don't let your mama, your daddy, don't let your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend that you probably should have in church. <sighs> you know, you know it, it, it's, 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 it's profound to think. I, I got to move. It's profound to think that we can stop Jesus today. Those who told him not to bother the master, the master then told them, bring him. It, it, it kind of trips me out. You read this, man, and, and, and so they're the same people. Knock it off! Shut up! And then Jesus comes up, you know, because they, they're all a bunch of crowd pleasers anyway. And so, and so Jesus walking through. He's a superstar. Everybody want to be with him. Like, Jesus, yo, Jesus. And he says, yo, hey, bring him over here. And they're like, hey, Jesus wants you. <laughs> it's, amazing how, it's amazing how when it's going to make some other people look good, how they're willing to help you. Wouldn't, wouldn't spit on you if you were on fire. <laughs> but then all of a sudden it's going to make them look good. <laughs> let, let me pray with you. Let me, let me lead you in a little... A little prayer. You know, if they, if they would have cared about Barnabas, they would have they taken him without Jesus calling him. But that's another sermon for another time. In verse number 50, it says, And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Barnabas, many of you know the story. Barnabas, he had on beggars' garments. And the scripture tells us that he cast those off. That was a sign of faith. If you read the scripture, he cast aside his garments before he came. I was talking to my dad again today, and, and it just kind of dropped in my spirit that, that here he is. He took off his beggar's garment before he came. Many times we want to bring all our stuff, see what God's going to do, then take it off. This dude had some faith. I wonder how many miracles from heaven have been held up because of our resistance to cast aside things that have been definers in our life. There's some of you here that the miracles that God has for you, they have been held up because there's a resistance from you. An opposition from you. It's not that he can't do miracles. It's an opposition from you because you won't cast aside the things and the very things that have been defining you. Whether it be anger, whether it be a lack of faith, whether it be disobedience, whether it be you relying on all of the things of the past that have come to define you. But those, those things cannot define you. The garment was symbolic of his lifestyle. He had lived in this garment and live the life of a beggar. 
it represented all his restrictions. It represented all the limitations and impossibilities of life. That's what, that's what our old life does. It symbolized his mental disposition that held him captive. It defined and determined his actions. That's what happens when we, we need a touch from God, but we won't cast things aside. It still keeps us restricted. It keeps us in a slavery mentality. This coach said, I am blind, therefore I can't do anything for myself. I'm a beggar, and I've got to rely on everyone else's generosity because I have no sight. In other words, basically he's saying, I, I've got to depend on others for my well-being. I, I wonder today, how many here, you're spiritually blind? You're blind. You're blind to the things of God. You're blind to the promises of God that even though you're in a place that's full of faith, what I love about new life, and I love coming here because this place is so full of faith, I, I, I'm so blessed. You guys don't understand what happens to me when I come to this house. I, 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 yes, uh, uh, Sunday, I was just smiling. I said, I, I don't need another service. I got this one. There's many who know nothing of the spirit of revelation and truth. Many people who are like the Israelites who choose to live as blind beggars, who choose to receive everything secondhand. I mean, I don't want anything secondhand. <laughs> 2020, I don't want no secondhand. 2020, I don't want to yes and amen you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. There's many people here in the church today that are blind by choice. I don't think that Barnabas was blind by choice. We don't know whether he was born that way. We don't know whether he had an accident. We just know that he was blind. But there's people here today that are blind by choice because to receive your spiritual sight demands responsibility. That when God speaks to us and he removes the, 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 the veil from our eyes and gives us spiritual sight or spiritual insight, it demands responsibility. It demands that we change. That means that if God speaks to you and you don't change, it's no good saying you got a revelation. I'm preaching a lot better than you let me know I'm preaching right now. Barnabas knew to receive his sight in his right to beg. He knew it. He knew. If, I'm gonna, if I get my sight back, I can't be a beggar anymore. To get my sight back, it removes my right to beg. He knew that he would have to labor for himself. That's what happens when you get saved and get full of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to beg anymore. I'm preaching, huh? You don't have to beg anymore. You can break the word for yourself. There's a responsibility. That means that you don't just come on Sunday and hope, Pastor, I hope you bring some. Listen, you better eat more than just on Sunday morning. Y'all ain't hearing me preach this thing. You'll try to put this all on the pastors. I, 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 I hope they bring something deep. You better get something deep during the week. He, I, uh, pastor, you, you have a responsibility. Now, I think you do. Y'all quiet on me here tonight. <laughs> I'm going home on Friday, Ken, folk. <laughs> Bartimaeus had cultivated a spiritual desperation and desire to see, and he was ready for change. And I, 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 I just got to know is anybody ready for change? Huh. You know, I feel it. I feel deep down in my spirit, uh, that 2020 getting ready to be dangerous, y'all. I just, I feel it. I, I, I know we, I know we say it, but I feel something different happening. I feel that 2020 is going to be a wonderful year of revelation. Are you ready to change? When, what Bartimaeus heard of Jesus calls him and called him beyond his condition. He heard about it. He didn't see about it. He heard about it. Jesus was the talk of the town, and he heard about him way before he saw him. 
And it moved him, as our sister said, beyond complacency. It convinced him that the possibility of a fuller life is actually true. That faith in his heart created a spiritual sight. That even though Bartimaeus was blind, he was able to see things that other people around him could not even see. They asked Helen Keller, what could be worse than being blind? She said, having eyes and not being able to see. Bartimaeus, he proved that even though he was blind, he possessed 20-20 vision. And he began to see himself with sight, spiritual sight, and no longer a beggar. I'm moving quickly. He cast away his garment. He and the scripture says he rose and he came to Jesus. He cast away. Come on, somebody. He cast away his garment. He cast away his garment. You want a miracle, you got to put aside all your excuses. We're, we're going to end tonight in prayer. But we're not going to come bringing no excuses. You know, you don't, don't come bringing all your excuses. Well, you know, if I was just a little bit richer, well, you ain't. Well, I would have do so much if I had more money. You got what you got. Amen. He rose. He stood up. He said he rose and he stood up. You know what needs to happen before we leave here today? We don't need New Year's resolutions. We need like New Year commitments. Amen. We don't need no resolution. Resolutions don't go, go good for folks. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some of y'all know, I think only maybe 15 or 20% of the people ever even keep their resolution. You know by January 5th, folks ain't even going to the gym no more. <laughs> Them bought some expensive workout equipment, sitting on the front lawn. Just take it if you want it. <laughs> Taking up too much room in my house. <laughs> Running up my light bill. <laughs> he, he stood up. And he made a decision to be different. And in standing up, he was leaving the position that defined him as a beggar. And I'm challenging you here today, this last few moments of 2019, you say, I'm going to leave those things that have defined my life. As our sister said, she said, I'm not going to see myself as a victim any longer. Do you know that you can live your whole life in the past and regret and never get breakthrough? And coming to Jesus, he was leaving the condition that defined him as blind. And coming to Jesus, he was stepping into the unknown. And every phase of your spiritual life, if you won't grow, God will take you to a place you've never been before. He'll pull you out into deep water where you can't see the bottom. My Uncle Vincent said, boy, you want to learn how to swim? I said, I do. He grabbed me by my neck took me out in the middle of the creek and let me go. Did you learn how to swim out here? Sometimes the Lord will take you out into the deep where you can't see the bottom. When God called Abraham, Abraham obeyed even though he did not know where he was going. As the children of Israel, they crossed the Jordan. Many of you remember this. If you're students of the word of God, they crossed the Jordan into their inheritance. And they were told to leave a space between them and the ark so they could see which way to go because they had not been that way before. Do you know that Lord is going to take some people a way you've never been before? <laughs> He's going to take new life <laughs> a way you've never been before. He's going to take the Comptons away that you've never been before. He's going to take us into the unknown. 2020 is where we've never been before. And many of God's people are missing what God has for them because they're not willing to trust him where they can't trace him. You know, sometimes you got to trust him when you can't trace him. In your own life, you got to trust him where you can't trace him. Some of you are, are, are you're, 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 you're at a place right now where you're like, God, I, I would go if I just knew. And he said, well, I'm taking you where you don't know. That's why you got to trust me. He's not telling you to trust about what you know. Trust him about what you don't know. 
because they were not willing many people to cast aside the garment. Jesus said, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. So you got to turn loose of the old to receive the new. So I close. Fastest sermon I ever preached in my life. My church would be happy. They'd be like, Pastor, it is possible, huh? There is a God in heaven. <laughs> it is a God who minds minutes and hours, huh? Are, are you willing to throw off your old garments for new? Some here you're bound because you just won't even just admit that you're spiritually impoverished. You know what happened today if you would just be honest and just say, you know what, God? Depleted. There's nothing here. I have form, but no power. I have form. See, you stay around church long enough, you can, you can speak this church language. You stay around enough people where you know how to the right spot to say hallelujah, right spot to bend a little bit. <clears throat> They're like, but they full of the Holy Ghost. No, you're full of something. The true test of who you are won't be how much you gyrate in church. The true test of who you are is going to be when you got to go live out there. I'm preaching good, huh? That's real living. This ain't real living. I hope, I hope you don't get it twisted and just think, man, huh, I'm living for God. No, living for God is going to start in about two hours. It's going to start in the morning when you got to wake up and deal with real people. Are you willing to change? You say, God, I, a lot of people don't change because they, they, it's easy to stay blind. So they walk around church, oh, God, you know, I need somebody to lead me. And the Lord is like, when are you going to be a leader? You know what hurts the church? Too many immature believers. I ain't trying to shoot at anybody tonight, but you know what? I'm going to tell you what hurts the church and what keeps uh, 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 and hinders discipleship. It's when you have too many people who are still begging instead of becoming people who have spiritual sight who can lead other people. You want to know, you want to be a blessing to your church? I'll tell you how to be a blessing to your church. Grow up. Oh, I'm losing the crowd, Pastor. <laughs> thank, thank God I'm too old to care. I said, thank God I'm too old to care. I got enough friends, y'all. Do you want Jesus to stand still where you are? Are you willing to do what it takes to get him to stand still? Jesus, he presented a simple question. Thank you, Lord. He presented a simple question. He says, what do you want me to do for you? I thank the Lord. He already knows, but he really wants you to say something. You don't think that he didn't know what that man wanted? Are you, are you really going to come here and think that he didn't know, that he called that man? He's like, man, oh, I can't even really, I don't even know what's wrong with him. He knew before he came. I thought Bartimaeus, he could have said, hey, you know what? I don't mind being blind, but I really want a new house. He, he could have said, yeah, I'll just keep being blind because I'm making a little bit of change being blind. But, but, uh, but I really want a new house. He could have said, hey, give me, Jesus, kick me down a couple thousand. But he said that I may regain my sight. In other words, he had sight, lost sight, and he said, I want to see again. Huh. So the Lord's saying to us here today, because I know, I know he's speaking to me. He said, Stacy, you know what? You had big vision. See, that's my time. Let me, let me ignore that. Uh, give me 30 seconds, Pastor. 30 seconds. Many of us, our vision is, it was wide. We can see things clearly. But time has passed and our vision has become restricted, self-oriented, self-indulgent, and all we can see is us, our situation, our trouble, our drama, but what we need here tonight is say, God, I need to be able to see. 
I need some spiritual focus. God, I'm saved, but I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. God, I need some peripheral that I just don't see myself, but I see other people. I see the possibilities that I have here in this house. I see the things that were impossible that could be made possible. Talk to me, somebody. I want to regain my sight so that I can see opportunities and destiny. And the challenge that I have for you, honestly, I'm done. It's a crowd to the Lord. I say, Lord, don't pass me by. He's here tonight. You know why he's here tonight? Not because we're special. We're here tonight because we ask him to come. And we dress this place with our praises. And he says, I'm passing by, and don't you miss it. I'm passing by, and I, he's always, Jesus was always on a mission. He was always on his way to the cross. He was always on his way to go do something else, but he always found time to stop for desperate people. And I believe that God has found some people here today say, God, 2020, enlarge my vision. Oh, 2020, God, let me see the possibilities and the great things that you have for me and my family and my church and the body of Christ. I need somebody to give the Lord some praise and bless him. Let's bow our heads, bow our heads all over this building. Let's bow our heads all over this building. Come on, let, let's all stand together. I'm going to give this back to Pastor. God, we're so appreciative of your grace and of your mercy. God is speaking to you. So God, I'm tired of begging. I'm tired of begging. I'm tired of settling for leftover experiences and secondhand experiences. God, you have something for me. And Holy Ghost of God, as you pass by, you're touching others, touch us tonight. God, restore vision to those that are here that feel like you can't use them anymore. Those that feel like so much time has passed and they cannot be used again. Oh God, I pray, touch them, Holy Ghost of God. Minister Grace. If God has spoken to you, uh, say, God, give me 2020 vision for 2020. God, give me 2020 vision for 2020 for my life, for my family, for my kids, for possibilities, for destiny, for purpose in the kingdom of God. If that's what you desire, lift your hand right now. Lift it up and say, I want it. Are you desperate for him? Say, God, I want it. God, I ask for a release right now. A release right now by the Holy Ghost of God. A release right now upon your people. Breathe upon them. Meet them at the point of their need. I pray for Pastor Compton and Sister Sherelle and Pastor Sherelle. I'm asking you for a blessing over this house, a blessing over their life, a covering over their life. I'm asking you, God, for creativity to flow from them. God, I cast down anything that would come to hinder them from walking in all that you have designed and ordained for them to walk in. Anyone who would speak evil against them, their words will have no effect. God, I'm asking you that everything that you placed in their hearts, 27 years, you are bringing it to pass. You are bringing it to fruition. You are going to bear fruit in your time, oh God. I speak and release them to a season of fruitfulness and breakthrough in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord praise and give him glory. Yeah. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, praise him. Pastor Washington, Pastor Damien, Elder Barry, Elder Caldwell. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
I'm going to get in the middle here, sir. You are recovering 100%. You are the man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, extend your hand to Pastor Stacy. Father, we heard his testimony 2019, his health issues, but you are bringing him back with revelation, compassion, mercy. And thank you, Father, that you have given us a word today, a right now word for what's getting ready to happen next year. And we pray for this man, his wife, his children, in the name of Jesus. We pray for his ministry, for all those that are connected with him. Father God, I thank you for wisdom that you have imparted unto him, that he can have the discipline and the focus upon the call upon his life. Let him not be like Epaphroditus, but give him grace in Jesus' name to always have his pulse on wherever he goes. He will speak the prophetic word over your people. He will minister to the leadership in Jesus' name. And Lord, you will call him to a different place in his life what he has deposited in us. Father, we give back to him. Thank you for a heart that when he always come, he's a servant. Bless your servant. Bless your servant. Give him a double portion of your spirit. Touch his hands, Lord God, that whatever hands he touch, whatever bodies he touch, in Jesus' name, that he will bring restoration, renewal, revival, and resurrection. We give you the praise, Father, that you're doing a new work. Completely cleanse his blood. Let every member of his body function properly. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise for touching his mouth. And even as he's spoken to us tonight, Father God, you have made him a Bartimaeus of our time. Let him see clearly what you're saying to the church according to your spirit and according to your word. We bless Pastor Stacy on the crown of his head to the soles of his feet in Jesus' name. Make his feet like Hines' feet. Let him walk the way you want him to walk. Up the mountain, bringing the people of the Lord to the high place of worship and praise. We thank you for his mother. Thank you for his brothers. Thank you for his father. Thank you for the grandchildren and the family in Jesus' name. And what you're getting ready to do, we honor you for sending us a son in the ministry that's not afraid of the faces of the people. We honor you. Lift the heavy burdens, untangle, dismantle, and undo anything that would hinder your word and the call on his life. Thank you, Father for honoring us tonight. We bless him and we bless you in Jesus' name. Whatever you have given unto me, Father, I give to him. My father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, all of the great men in my life, all five pastors that I set under the anointing of every prophet, every bishop, in the name of Jesus, every apostle, every woman of God, every prayer warrior, I give to this man what you have given unto me freely, that he, be, he may be filled with the fullness of the Lord. And for that, Father, we give your name to praise. Give him souls for his hire and add to the kingdom according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, bless the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. What time is it? 11.45. Okay. What a word. Right now word. Unashamed. Right where we live at. And what I love about it, I don't talk to him. I don't talk to his mother. I don't talk to any person that come before you to speak the word. If it's not the Holy Ghost that's leading them, I'll know it. This is where the church is. This is where the people are. So the preacher come in and start throwing at folks because I done said stuff and he get personal. 
You want to know if it's true to the spirit of the Lord in a man or a woman? Don't say nothing to them. Don't tell them your issue. That's why I don't want to know certain things. I'll say this to you. As he was preaching, I heard the Lord say very clearly to me, Pastor Compton, if you're going to have 2020 vision, then I need you to take the beam out of your own eye first. If you're going to have 2020 vision for 2020, first thing you got to do, I got to take the beam out of my own eye first so I can see clearly what the needs are. Matthew chapter 7, you know the scripture, right? Let me pull the speck out of your eye because you can't see clearly because you got a little speck. When I have a beam in my eye, That's what I'm praying for. Take the beam out of my eye. And then bring me to a place of understanding. James and John, mama came to Jesus and said, I have a desire. I have a request. A prayer request. Let my son, one sit on the right and one sit on the left in your kingdom. Jesus looked at her and said, ma'am, it is not mine to give. I can't answer that request. I want God to heal us. I want him to deliver us. I want him to bless us, bring prodigals home. I want him to do mighty things. I'm putting prayer requests together. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. But there's some prayer requests. I've got to be very sensitive, and he'll tell me. I can't answer that request. It's not mine to give. I call you to have victory. Defeat the adversary, not try to annihilate him. Defeat fear. Fear's coming back, not annihilate it, eradicate it, push it away. Defeat your problems, defeat your situations. I want to remove it. Get them away from the people of the Lord. I didn't call you to do that. There's only one I called to do that, and he's the high priest. I just need you to defeat it every time it show up. It's coming back again to test you every, every place you get to. I need you to defeat it. And remember, it's the shadows, not death. It's the shadows. It's the sickness. That's the shadow. It's an ugly thing. They keep going in a circle. That's what we're fearing. We're fearing the shadows, not the actual thing, because we know if they go to be with the Lord, hallelujah, that's what we want. But it's the shadows. Oh, they're in the hospital again. Oh, they got tubes in them. Oh, they got, he's got blood clots. Or, or he needs new eyes. Or it seems like they, they're not going to ever get rid of this habit they got. It's the shadows. The fear, that's where we fear. I'm fearing the wrong thing. What do I need to do? Set your affection, son, on things above. You're looking at the wrong thing. I'm focusing on the wrong thing. I can't worry about his people. He has you and your family. I can't worry about your situation. I bring them to you. We present them to you. It's his job to meet out at every situation. This is what they're needing right here. I know, Pastor, your heart is right, and you want them, because we don't want nobody to suffer. We, we, help me, Jesus. We don't want nobody to suffer. When, when we walk through the aisle, walk down the, the, through the warehouse where all of the blessings are, everything in the warehouse, we walk down every aisle except the aisle of suffering. Push your cart down the suffering aisle and say, give me some more suffering. Nobody, nobody wants to go down that aisle. And he's given you a platinum credit card to put all this stuff into suffering because it's the suffering that makes us, Pastor Stacy. It's the suffering that pulls this flesh away from our spirit and you get a chance to see who you really are because there's no good thing in this thing. So I got to pull my platinum card out and go down the suffering aisle and say, I ain't been suffering enough. How am I going to get that? 2020, I'm starting off this Friday with all night prayer. I got to get back to the basics. I'm not praying enough. My passion is for everything, preach the word, sing the song. We can do that with our eyes closed. But I got to get back to praying. Pastor, you know, I would come and pray, but, you know, the timing is off. Well, 
every quarter we're going to have all night prayer. We're going to start incorporating fasting more. I've gotten away from my spiritual discipline that brought me to this place. And I'm relying on, oh, I know how to do that. We'll just practice it a little bit. That's my problem. Take the beam out. I see it. I see it, Lord. I see what I need to do. The Lord has been kind to us. 2020, we're going to do, we're going to start a building program. We're going to start it in 2020. The end of 2020, we're going to start it. There's some things ahead of us, but we got to make sure that our hearts are right. And I appreciate tonight him talking to me. He talked to me tonight from the word, and I do appreciate it. Awesome word, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. What time is it? 10 to 12. Okay, that's a good place to stop. Every year we do this. <clears throat> get with your family. If you don't have your family, come hang out with our family. Let's get on our knees. I very rarely ask you to get on your knees. We're going to do that a little bit more in 2020. We can come and stand and pray, but I'm going to ask you to do a little bit more what we used to do. Had no problem eating the carpet, laying on my face. I can't even bow my knees anymore. <laughs> Every watch night, we get on our knees and we find a place in the house of the Lord. This whole sanctuary has been set apart. And we pray, Lord, you know what this year is going to be like. Get with your family, family first. So let's do that. We're going to pray past 12 o'clock. When you get through praying, you know, just offer up a praise. Would you do that right now? Let's, let's get with our families all over the sanctuary, everywhere, on the altar, wherever you want to go. You do it right there. You can do it up here, wherever. But I need everybody, everybody. Let's get with our family and let's, let's pray together.